My name is Emily Manjaru. I am the Senior Manager for PR and Communications at Smile Train in Africa. Smile Train is the world's largest cleft focused charity. Our model is different because we partner with local medical professionals, leveraging a Chinese adage of teaching a person to fish. Our story starts in 1999 when Charles B. Wang was in China and he realized that there was a big gap in when medical professionals would go to hospitals, treat the patients and then leave. The biggest question he was left asking is what happens to the patients after they leave if they develop a complication or if some of them come back and they're not optimized for surgery and then they're turned away. Who takes care of them? So he figured that it's important to leverage the teaching a person to fish model to partner with local medical professionals so that patients, first of all, don't have to go so far to receive quality and free cleft care, but then they also have a community that is taking care of them. Since 1999, we have grown to 90 countries. And the beauty of it is that in Africa, our program started in 2002, and we are all over 38 countries who are in Africa. We partner with more than 700 medical professionals in more than 300 partner hospitals across Africa. But all over the world, we have been able to partner with close to, oh gosh, I'd, I'd hate to say it because I don't know the number right now. But what I would say is, to date, we have transformed the lives of 2 million patients. This year, we're celebrating Smile Train at 25. It's 25 years of impact. It's 25 years of smiles. It's 25 years of resilience through our medical professionals, working in difficult challenges, working in tough times, but still maintaining the vision where everyone, not just children, not just adults, but everyone has access to free, safe, timely and comprehensive cleft care all year round. One of the beauties again is that we have to celebrate more than 170 plus patients who have been treated across Africa. And here in Kenya, we have partnered with 21 medical professionals who have given us the chance to transform the lives of more than close to 15,000 beneficiaries since 2002. Let's start with why. The big why is why not? In fact, sometimes our boss says that we need to get ourselves almost out of uh, a job. But the truth is that every three minutes, somewhere in the world is a child born with a cleft. That makes it difficult for them to breathe, to eat, to speak, to socialize if they grow up. The pain of growing up with an untreated cleft, the stigma that the mother is experiencing, the pain that they have to go through psychologically is one of the big ways of why we do the work that we do. We don't just do it alone, and it brings the community aspect of the big why. We need people to buy into it. That's why we partner with local professionals. The biggest experience, again, that we have observed is that when the partners see the vision, they work with us. They get a sense of ownership of the entire process. One of the biggest challenges, I will say, is culture. What I would say is cleft is treatable despite our cultures because there are some places that people consider clefts as a blessing. But physiologically, that person is struggling that person is finding it hard to eat, that person is finding it hard to make a difference in their lives. Just because in your culture it's okay, it doesn't mean that they have that they will not interact with other cultures. They will interact with people from different walks of life and those people will look at them differently. We need to be sensitive to the fact that it is not who, we who define it. Cleft is a condition that can be treated. We need to dispel myths because there are so many bad and founded myths that hinder patients from coming to receive surgery. There are some seriously painful uh, cultural things that people do that they throw children into rivers, that they throw children out into places that you can't even mention for the simple fact that they have a correctable condition 
that these children and this adult have a chance at life. Let us give them that chance. We do not have that right over them. God gave them the cleft. You're the one who was lucky. In fact, we are the ones who got lucky. We we could have been born with a cleft. So let's be sensitive to patients with clefts. Let us not treat them any different because they're not different. The patients who just received, they need to just receive surgery. They can go on to live a comfortable, healthy, and productive life, just like us. Once they receive surgery, they receive speech therapy, they can interact, they can socialize. You give them a better chance at life by giving them a space to know that there's something, that, that there's a place that they can go and receive treatment um, at the earliest. So if a child is born with a cleft, my appeal is, let us know a smile show. We have a network of partner hospitals. If you go onto our uh, SmileTrain website and just go to smiletrainafrica.org slash find help, find the nearest partner hospital, whichever country you are in our 38 partner hospital, I mean uh, countries, you will find our partner hospital and they will be able to receive absolutely free surgery. Lastly, what keeps you going when things get really, really tough? I consider work as service. I, I, I think of every task as this is this is someone's blessing you know that this this story that i am hoping will be told will help inspire someone there's i i work in the communication space and the biggest challenge is being able to first of all break down the concepts of cleft the concepts of stigma and getting sensitive about the culture there's a story that we did on one of the local TV stations and there's a family that called in explaining that they had a similar condition. I felt so touched by that story that I even started engaging with the person behind the scenes. We got uh, the person access to a treatment facility. The beauty of them coming to say thank you is very fascinating. Another interesting story is because people are story, people are a wealth of experience when you sit down to talk to them. I happened by a gentleman, he was hesitant because he had both lip and cleft lip and palate, but he had already received his cleft uh, lip surgery. He had only left his cleft palate surgery. It was in his adult years. After we had connected and I told him, please pass by one of our partner hospitals, receive speech therapy, you'll be okay. He said, no, I'm, I'm an adult now, it's fine. Years later, he calls me and tells me, ah, I've gotten a baby and she's a beautiful baby girl, but she has a cleft lip. Where do I go? Immediately, without hesitation, go to this hospital and they will take care of you. Months later, he was like, oh my God, thank you so much for linking me up. Those stories shed, make me feel like I want to shed tears sometimes. Um, because you feel like there's such a big picture, there's a bigger picture to everything that we do. And that's why it pains me that there are policy makers who take lightly prioritizing surgery and anesthesia. We need basic surgery and anesthesia capacity in our local community. We need quality medical professionals. We need quality infrastructure. We need governance systems that strengthen the gap for the patients. This is something that can be done. This is something that it just takes two people to come together to have those conversations and walk the talk. The important thing is we have beautiful files of policies, but they need to be implemented. So my space to play is just to create the awareness. And hopefully this brings the, the two together, the policy maker to meet the patient and the beneficiary through the media, of course, and I really, really do appreciate the media for supporting us through awareness creation. Whenever you guys are telling these stories, you are bringing patients closer, and that is all the support that we need.